Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness. Could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy, and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. moment arrives, you hesitate. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony, and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However... The same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacony's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm -hmm. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said... I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. But in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacony. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Huh. 
I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot <laughs> sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun. Then whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame. My feet is death. May we meet again. In reality. After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers, or salvation. <laughs> you mean... my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why... We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human, though it's Definition escapes me. Isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, 
And I don't know if they really meant it, but... If longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well... Congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her, just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left, and besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. 
And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off Nihility. The one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire, do I realize that I'm still alive? When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony, a sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, Everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biari Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient Swarm disaster? Tazeroth, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe, and it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war, the propagation and the order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum, and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgaroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacony. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. This is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. 
There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the Chosen One who harmonizes? Varied sounds. <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I. I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order, so I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal... Well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other son if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. <laughs> Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world, instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, 
It's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. <laughs> <laughs>